Good morning. So I love putting people on the spot. I don't know if it's just because I'm the oldest in my family. I love to do that. But the last couple of days as I've been preparing this homily, I've been asking people when I talk to them to define faith for me. And if you had to turn to the person next to you right now and to define faith, what would you say? Or if I came with a microphone to you, could you do it? Like all of a sudden we're almost like stop because we kind of know it. We've experienced it. But to explain, it's a lot harder. It's like what they say, if you want to teach something, you have to know it 10 times better than the student that has to learn it. Any teacher here, I'm sure, knows that. Or if you've ever had to help your child learn something, you have to know how to explain things in different ways. I think that's the case for faith as well. So if you had to turn to the person next to you, how would you say, what would you say faith is? We can all breathe a sigh of relief. I am not going to make you do that. (laughs) But this weekend, I do want us to explore this theological virtue of faith on what faith is so we can better understand it. So if we ask any of our kids here, anybody that's gone through BCTEs, they know that the theological virtues are faith, hope, and love, which are gifts given to us by God. They are grace. They are freely given. They're nothing that we earn. And faith being one of those theological virtues, we have completely given to us by God. So I want us to start by looking no further than Scripture itself to help us to define what faith is. And we look to the 11th chapter of Hebrews, verse 1, which says, Faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence for things not seen. Crystal clear now, right? Faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence for things not seen. I don't know about you, but the author of Hebrews probably just makes it more misunderstood in my own mind. It makes it more muddy in one sense. So I want us, because we're Catholic, thank goodness, we don't just have scripture, we also have the tradition of the church. So let us look at some of those theologians, those great theologians of our church, as we help to unpack what faith is. And the first one I want us to look at is St. Thomas Aquinas. St. Thomas Aquinas kind of perfected one of the ways to understand things of God And he did that through the via negativa. So he didn't invent this. This is actually an ancient Jewish way of coming to know God or explaining things of God. But the via negativa, it's in Latin, it means that which something is not. That which something is not. So you explain something by saying what it is not. Because a lot of times things of God are so big and so hard to understand, it's sometimes easier to start saying, well, what is he not? And then we can understand more what he is. So I want us to look at just a couple different things of what God is not in order to help us with this definition. Or what faith is, I should say. So faith, first and foremost, is not trusting in something for which there is no evidence. Let me repeat that again. Faith is not trusting in something for which there is no evidence. We look at St. Thomas Aquinas again, who comes up with the five proofs for the existence of God. That we can come to know God. I mean, there's proofs, philosophical proofs. You can use logic to come to understand a philosopher God, that there is a creator God. Maybe not the God that loves us. That's the, that's the leap of faith you have to take. But there are proofs for that. Or we look in the world that it's knowable, that it's created and designed, and we can come to understand it. There's these proofs for God. There's these things that we can come to know God with our intellect. So faith is not something in which there is no proof. The second Faith is not an existential leap into the dark. Definitely leads off this first one. Faith is not some existential leap into the dark. We are not called, brothers and sisters, to close our eyes and ears to anything of learning about God and just, well, I have faith. We have to continue to learn. You have to come to know God more. That is why we have our faith. That's why we have scripture. That's why we have theology. So we can come to know the one whom we have faith in. And then finally, faith is not opposed to knowledge or to science. This has become really popular in like the last 150 years, that for some reason we've been told this lie that faith or religion and science, right religion and science, are somehow opposed to each other. Don't believe that lie. Don't believe it. It's been a lie to us because if we believe in right religion, we believe and have faith in God, the creator of all things, who created this whole material world in which we live in, Science is coming to know that world, coming to know it more, than if it's good science and good religion, they mesh perfectly. And it's a beautiful thing because science tells us what we can do, comes to discover what we can do, but it doesn't tell us what we should do. It doesn't tell us what we should do. That's what religion does. It gives us ethics and morality. 
I can create an atomic, well, I can't, but we can create an atomic bomb through science, but it doesn't tell us when or when we should not use it. That's what faith and morality and ethics tell us. They need to go together. I think that's really what's wrong with our world at times. But these are what things that faith are not. They are not without evidence. They're not closing your eyes and taking a leap in the dark, and they're not opposed to knowledge. Then we have what faith is not. It is via negativa. We then look at what faith is. Because it's great to say what it's not, but I still am confused on then how do I say, well, what is faith? And I want us to jump forward to C.S. Lewis in the 20th century, a great writer. I'm sure many of you have read some of his books, a great thinker, a great philosopher. And in his book called Mere Christianity, he defines faith as that of both the ascent of the will and the intellect. Ascent of the will and the intellect. And I think it defines it really well for us. Because so often when we try to define faith, or we try to understand it, it's like looking at a tree and trying to say, well, just describe a tree, and all you do is look at the little leaf on the tree, and you miss the whole picture. And C.S. Lewis is saying, no, faith is both the ascent of the intellect, what we come to know, using our knowledge, but also the will, our heart, our desires, going towards it, that undescribable feelings at times. And it's a scent of both of those that we come to know what faith is. Last weekend, I, uh, I took four days off, and I flew down to Arizona to visit my sister. It was great and beautiful weather. Don't tell the bishop that I ran away for a couple days. And I was looking for the last couple of months for tickets. And if anybody's flown recently, they know how ridiculously expensive airline tickets are right now. So I've been watching these tickets or trying to find a cheap flight to Arizona for a couple of months, and finally I just gave up because the prices were not coming down at all, so I just bought the tickets and bit the bullet. After I bought the tickets, and I called my sister, and I told Claire, so this is when I'm arriving, this is when I need you to pick me up, and everything else. So, okay. It's like, and Claire, I better have a good time, because I could fly to Europe for what I just paid these tickets for to go and see you. And she's like, Declan, don't you trust me? Don't you have faith in me that you were going to have a great time together? I said, yes, of course, I trust you, Claire. And she came through on her promise, I do have to say. It was a fun time. But I think that's exactly what faith is. Because faith, brothers and sisters, is not in something or some institution or some morality code. Rather, faith is in a person, the person of Jesus Christ. Amen? It is faith in Jesus Christ. It's in that relationship. I think that's exactly what Thomas Aquinas is pointing to and C.S. Lewis is pointing at. That we come to know Jesus, and in that relationship, we come to know God more. And that's what faith looks like. It's a relationship. That's what we see in that gospel as well. It's right at the Last Supper. It's right after that. Jesus then tells the disciples, I'm going. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Trust me. Have faith in me, and you know the way. And then we have Thomas. I love Thomas. Poor old doubting Thomas. And he says, Lord, how do we know where you're going? How can I know the way? And we hear Jesus almost just sigh, like, Thomas, Thomas, come on. I am the way. It's me. It's relationship with me. Thomas, I think, speaks to a reality that I know I do all the time, which is trying to make deals with God. If you would just do this, I would never struggle with faith again. If you would just do this, I'll never sin again, right? I think we all do that at times, amen? And the problem is, is God's up there sighing at us. Come on, Declan. You know this isn't what it's about. It's about relationship with me. It's about faith in me, just like we can't do that with our spouse. If you would just do this, I'll never make you angry again. With a friend, if you would just do this, we can be friends forever. No, that doesn't work that way. We know that. But so often we approach God in that way. This weekend, or this coming week, I want to encourage us to pray for that increase in faith. As I said at the beginning, it's a theological virtue. It's a grace given to us by God. So we pray asking God to increase our faith. I know for myself every day when I celebrate Mass, the moment after the consecration, after I say, this is my body and this is my blood, and I lift up the host, I lift up the chalice and the bells ring, that Jesus is truly present. It's in that moment that the bread becomes his body, the wine becomes his blood. And I say to myself under my breath, I say, I repeat the words of the centurion in the gospel. Say, Lord, I believe. 
Help my unbelief. Lord, I have faith. Help my doubt. Let's say these words together each day because faith is something that's so fleeting at times. We can feel as if it's so weak in our lives. But Jesus enters in. He gives us the grace necessary. He gives us our faith if we ask him for it because he keeps his promises. So brothers and sisters, never doubt what you know, never doubt in the dark what you know to be true in the light. Can I hear the church say?